I am grateful to God for you, our listeners, tuning in at this time via your radio dial or even by way of the internet at thewordfm.com on this Saturday night. I will not take you for granted considering you could be listening to anything or anyone else and I am grateful that God has guided your ears our way to receive His Word and His music through our Words of Life show here at KWRD 100.7 FM. So please procure paper and pen and now for today's message I'd like to direct our attention to our opening scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 3 beginning at verse 25 and I am going to read the NASB version of Deuteronomy 3 beginning at verse 25 through verse 28 and it's a text in which Moses is speaking to others about why he was dejected uh, and angry simply because of them. He's trying to explain that to them. So the verses begin. Moses says unto the Lord, Let me, I pray, cross over and see the fair land that is beyond the Jordan, that good hill country, and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account, and that's noteworthy, and he would not listen to me. And the Lord said to me, Moses, enough. Speak to me no more of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and lift up your eyes to the west and north and south and east and see it, the promised land, with your eyes. For you shall not cross over this Jordan, but charge Joshua and encourage him, strengthen him, for he shall go across at the head of this people, and he will give them as an inheritance the land which you will see. I like to present for a topic for us to think about this week in the message. Title is Moving Forward with Minimal Encouragement from Others. Moving Forward with Minimal Encouragement from Others. I want us to understand before we get started. I want us to get this, and I want us to really sear into our minds tonight. There will be tests, there will be trials, life in general it will cause life to sometimes become difficult, and it'll be hard enough, and it's going to be trying at times to get through, but the task of getting through life will become more strenuous and challenging when we lack encouragement from those to propel us along our way especially when there are those that we feel should get excited about our plans, our visions, our purpose, and the lack of an encouraging pat on the back or an encouraging word in our efforts will sometimes discourage us. I want to break down what the word encourage really means. because If we define that word encourage naturally, encourage simply means to inspire with hope. It is to cheer on. It is to embolden or to support. To encourage in the Hebrew context of our opening scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 3, the word denotes that encouragement is to find courage or strength. It is to harden oneself like wax being fortified or strengthened. Now, as we approach the scriptural review of Deuteronomy 3, 25 through 28, let's backtrack to examine how we reached this point of Moses being angry and upset with the people. We've got to understand that God previously promises Moses that he would be with him in his primary purpose in life, which was located in Exodus chapter 3 account, God promised to be with Moses as his purpose was to lead the Israelites from the bondage of slavery to the promised land. Now, in spite of God's promise to be with Moses the entire time, Moses still feels that he needs encouragement. We see this in Moses' response because as God endows Moses with the ability to get the job done, Moses offers God excuse after excuse. 
terrified of what others will think or say. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3 to prove the previous statement. Notice all of the statements Moses utters to God beginning at Exodus 3 and 11. He says to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? As if Pharaoh were bigger than God. Verse 13, he says, Lord, you want me to say what to Pharaoh? As if Pharaoh were more powerful than God. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1, Moses says, Lord, they won't believe me that they overly concerned again about reactions. In verse 10, he says, I am not a good speaker. I am clumsy with words. I am slow of speech. Again, I, 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 overly concerned with self and insecurities. Exodus 4 and 13, Lord, send someone else, please. Literally, <laughs> he's vacating his purpose and later his destiny. And the final verse Exodus chapter 4, verse 14, God literally becomes angry with Moses and he sends Aaron to speak on Moses' behalf. of terrible despair where there's no hope or rest. The frightening truth is it's a horror-filled place reserved for those who choose to reject the way, the truth, and the life. Now, try to imagine what forever will feel like without Jesus. So as we begin the transition from our narrative on Moses and his need for encouragement and acceptance by others, understand that Moses was linked to the Egyptians, the people that he would have to deliver the Israelites from, simply because he was raised among them. Moses was not reared by his natural mother and father, but he was raised among the prosperous Egyptians to whom God would now call him to speak against. Now, as we begin our transition from Moses to applicable points for us, I would that we pause to think about how striking the last verse, Exodus 4 and 14 is. That verse says, God became angry with Moses and he authorizes someone else, Aaron, to speak on Moses' behalf simply because of Moses' preoccupation with people. This being the people he grew up amidst, this being those he had a relationship with, as well as Moses being overly concerned with his own perceived shortcoming. If I can be transparent for a moment, this ministered to me because I too have been guilty of worrying about others' opinion of me. I too have been preoccupied with those closest to me and I focused on my liabilities even as God has assured you and I that he is always with us. If Moses struggled with insecurities, if our church leaders wrestle with our various shortcomings, chances are you're listening right now because God wants you to confront these same issues, our insecurities, our shortcomings, what people might think about us, 
God wants us to deal with that so that he can use you and I for the purposes for which he has created us for. At some point, we must inspire ourselves in the Lord to move forward, even if it's with minimal encouragement, inspiration, or congratulations from others. Consequently, here is our first applicable point in the lesson. Point number one. An unhealthy preoccupation with others can delay or even forfeit our destiny. Notice how Moses is concerned about his role of why he wasn't entering the promised land. That didn't even cross his mind. He was too concerned about, man, the people. It's because of you all. It's because of this. It's because of that. The Lord was angry with me, Deuteronomy 3 and 26 says. He's speaking to the people. The Lord was angry with me, here's the blame game, on your account because of you. And the Lord would not listen to me. And the Lord then said to me, enough, Moses, speak to me no more of this matter. That matter being that which was found in the previous verse, verse 25. Moses explains to the people how he begged God to enter the promised land in the aforementioned verse, verse 25. The verse reads, let me, I pray, Lord, cross over and see the fair land, the promised land that is beyond the Jordan, that good hill country and Lebanon. But to understand why Moses begged and why God rebuked Moses, Moses seems to miss that his preoccupation with others did not allow God to get the glory God wanted to get through Moses. And so Moses says, it is because of you all, but the reality is Moses was at fault for why he did not enter the promised land. God empowered and encouraged Moses to speak to the rock. But Moses' disobedience in striking the rock was not the other's fault. It was his and his alone. That account is found in Numbers chapter 20, verses 7 through 12. The Lord says to Moses, you and Aaron, you take the staff, assemble the entire community, and as the people watch, you speak to the rock, and it will pour out its water. It'll provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community as well as their livestock. So Moses did as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it was kept before the Lord. Then he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather at the rock. Listen, you rebels. Here's where Moses got off track. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we? Not God, but must we, Aaron and I, bring you water from this rock? Then Moses raised his hand and he struck the rock twice. Water gushed out. So the entire community and the livestock drank their fill, but here's where the Lord intervened. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me, not you, but you didn't trust in me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land that I am giving them. Oh my. If we're honest, we're no different than Moses at times. The desire to acquiesce to and please people, the need to impress people, the temptation to take glory from God that he's not in the business of sharing, the need to perform for people hoping that we will be accepted. All at the risk of alienating God and disobeying what he expects of us, we have to be sure that we do not allow an unhealthy preoccupation with others cause a delay or even forfeiture of our God-appointed 
destinies. Before we conclude our teaching with our final two points, I'd like to introduce our song of the week with this advice. Our eternal destinies will never be by our might, power, or strength. Our human efforts profit nothing. It is only through God's spirit and his word that we do anything. For apart from him, we can do nothing. This song aptly states the aforementioned. Here it is in you from the MDI EP with great acoustic guitar work from John Hershenberg right here on 100.7 FM, KWRD, The Word.
Here's point number two. Realize factors and feelings unknown to us may cause a lack of encouragers in our lives. If we get discouraged by the lack of encouragers in our lives, let us consider this. Our families may have simply done the best they could with how they were raised. There might be generational opinions to consider. Could be an abusive past or history effect. There could also be religious upbringings or preferences. My point is this, there will be different reasons that factor into why we lack encouragement from those we wish would encourage us. As a result, we should not expect what others may not have the ability to administer based upon what they've experienced, what they've been taught, or maybe even how they felt in their journey of life. It's somewhat difficult to give encouragement to another when depression, foreclosure, divorce, loss of job, or maybe even loss of health and death overtakes those that we're expecting encouragement from. Many factors go into why we might lack encouragers in our lives, and here's hoping that the listener may be discouraged, that might be discouraged today, here's hoping that you now be inspired to be an encourager, especially if we know how it feels to lack encouragement. To see how another person's disappointment can affect another unknowingly, Let's think about how Moses felt after God informed him that he would not be the one allowed to enter the promised land and how this could have impacted Joshua. It is not difficult to imagine Moses saying, you know what, Lord, I've led them for 40 years. I have guided, I have prayed for, I have interceded on their behalf. I have received the commandments, but now Joshua, not Aaron or I, but Joshua gets to lead the people into what I've waited for my entire life, my dream, my promise. And to top it off, Lord, you want me to encourage my successor? Who knows if Moses' encouragement to Joshua was, it was marked by excitement and joy for Joshua, or was it tempered by a minimal reaction of words simply because Moses was disappointed. Notice how Moses had to be instructed in our opening text to charge Joshua and to encourage him and strengthen him because I think the reality hits Moses that wow, I will not cross over. The odds are he didn't feel like encouraging anyone. If we were really being transparent right now, I don't think any of us would have felt like encouraging Joshua either. I can relate to how Moses might have felt, and the moral for that mental application of Moses' shoes to our feet is this. There will be mysterious factors and maybe even feelings that can cause a lack of encouragers in our lives. This provides the final transition into our last applicable point of the message, and that is point number three. Stop expecting what people are not wired to give. I would be shortchanging us in today's message if I didn't reiterate a simple but overlooked fact. We can expect too much from people. Codependency develops and our moods change based upon the expectation of another making us happy, content, or fulfilled. So in a moment of self-pity, God ministered to me first as I'm ministering to you. He ministered to me first as I was complaining about a litany of things, one being a lack of encouragement from others. So God had me to ponder this. With well over three quarters of a million words encompassing the Bible, over 788 plus thousand words of text canonized, the word encouraged or encouraged in the past tense is located only nine times in the Bible. That absolutely stunned me. 
four instances of encouraged, five occasions of encouraged, and there is not one instance of either word in the New Testament. So I surmised, Lord, with so little in the way of encouragement, nine times out of 788 plus thousand words, with so little in the way of encouragement mentioned in scripture, could it be that I am expecting from people what we are not naturally wired to give? I know I've struggled with a long history of insecurities, concerns, acceptance issues, excluding myself in the past from God's grace, being good enough for me, and regrettably, I became codependent upon others to give to me what people are not naturally wired to offer us. I'll close the message today with King David giving us a great example to follow because after a series of tragedies and setbacks, those dedicated to David turned against him and wanted to kill David for the loss of their families while away at war. Yet, 1 Samuel 30 and 6 instructs us that David had to learn to encourage himself in the Lord, not in others. I learned a valuable lesson doing a word study on encourage because as I too ran to God for solace and comfort, I realized I must quit expecting from people what we are not wired naturally to bestow upon one another. I'll close our teaching with doable concepts that we should challenge ourselves with and here tonight are our applicable examination questions. Question number one. Am I allowing a person, group, or perceived opportunity to distract me from God's destiny for me? Point number two. Who am I most dependent on for encouragement? People or our Lord? And question number three. Am I open to freely distributing the encouragement that I desire to receive from others? As we conclude our show in prayer, the book of Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 states, The rain and the snow come down from the heavens, and they stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with your word, Lord. You send it out. It will always produce fruit. It will accomplish all that you want it to, and it will prosper everywhere that you send it. John 6 and 63 informs us it is the spirit alone, your spirit, that gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. The very words that you spoke to the disciples and to us are spirit and life. So, Lord, we pray that your word produces the fruit of obedience and prospers in the heart of listeners that will not be satisfied with just hearing your word, but doing it also. We pray that you, our listeners, have heard God's spirit instead of my frail human efforts at ministry. And we close believing that someone desires eternal life with you. So, God, please make us all useful, encouraging vessels, promoting the name of Jesus Christ and him alone for eternal salvation. It is in your name we pray. It is so. Amen.